Hello. This is just to remember how our last video finished. In this video we will look to more details about our static and rigid bodies. First, we will focus on our static body. As we have seen before, our static body shall not be moved, but it can affect other bodies. Let's see. First, we will test these constant linear values. These values make another body on a collision react like if the static body would be moving. We can see our object being moved slowly to the right. So, increasing or decreasing the x value is like simulating our static body moving to the left or to the right, similar to a treadmill movement. And our y value is like it is moving to the top or to the bottom. And to finish our static body, we have the constant angular variable that simulates the rotation of this body on collision. Ok, now we can go to our rigid body. First, let's make a bit more space and drag these two bodies to the other corner. And now we duplicate our rigid body so you can see the difference between our normal body and the changed one. And here they are. Let's change the new one sprite to help to identify them. And here they are, but you can see that our original body will be still affected by our jump action and the new one not. Let's change that in our script to apply the same impulse to both. And now, both are reacting in the same way. But let's align them, 
so that we can see easily the small difference between them. And now we can start our tests. First, let's increase this object's mass. You can see that as expected, this will increase the weight too. And now, as expected, they are falling at the same rate, but we can see the difference as we try to apply an impulse to them. Let's put our original mass value back to test our gravity. And now, let's restart our values to make other fast tests. First, we will change the linear values. These values are applied at the start of the scene to these objects, but they will stop with time or with collision. So you can see that our object is moving a little to the right and a little faster to the bottom. But after the collision, the linear movement stops. And we can see that the angular value does it the same way as an initial rotational impulse and stops with time or after collision. Now, to make our next test, we will increase the gravity a bit just to keep our bodies at the screen. We will change the applied forces. The applied forces will be applied continuously. So we can see that if the object is on the air, the applied forces are visibly moving the object. And we will finish this changing the torque value. The torque value is equivalent to a constant angular velocity, so it will keep rotating our object when possible. And when our body is on the ground, it keeps being affected by the physics. It was just not visible because the weight of the bodies was holding it on the place. But let's make a test increasing the torque. At the mode option, we can make a rigid body act like another object. Rigid, like it is acting now. Static, to act like a static body. Character, to make the object like a rigid body, but uh, it does not rotate anymore. 
and kinematic to act like a kinematic body. This option is useful if you need to change the object's behavior through your game. At the sleep option, we can let our body sleep until a collision occurs. Let's see. And here, to finalize our rigid body analysis, we have this option for continuous collision detection analysis. They are used to improve the collision detection, but are slower than normal detection, so just use it if it's really necessary. And the contacts report option can be used to put a maximum limit of collisions that can be reported with this object at the same time. And you can activate the collision monitor if you want your object to send a signal when a collision occurs. This can be used by another object to make something. We'll look at signals in a future video. Okay guys, that's it for this video, thanks for watching.